From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here. Yes, indeed. It is going to be a busy show. We're going to open up the phone lines for you if you'd like to join the conversation on this Tuesday. Um, a lot happening in the great city of Nashville, and as we do every month, we uh, get to have the vice mayor join us, and that would be Jim Shulman, who, look, he's a busy guy, and from what I understand, you've just come back from your first real vacation in five years. We, uh, we finally took a break. <laughs> I, and now I think I need another vacation. <laughs> Already? Well, yeah, you, you leave for a week and all kinds of things happen, you know. And uh, I told everybody to behave themselves, and then obviously it didn't. Uh, a lot of stuff happened. Um, so when you talk about a vacation, um, you know, you, you try to get away from it all. Uh, that didn't necessarily work. Um, I had council stuff to deal with. Uh, well, you're there on the beach with your laptop and... I didn't take my laptop, no, okay. I took my phone. Okay. Um, one time I did, I, I, left it, um, I left it back in the place where we were staying uh, for a couple of hours. I, I didn't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, it's it's okay, you know. Mm -hmm. You 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 know people go well. You got to take a vacation. Uh, yeah, I mean it was one of those things where I, I think I just needed to take a little bit of sure, a break. or just to get out of town for a bit. It's good to have you back. You look a little tan, and well. that's nice. So yeah, a lot going on. And tonight, um, you know, we, we were walking in together, and I'm like, you're gonna have a late night tonight, aren't you? And how many uh, pages on the agenda for this evening's meeting? I think it's fifty-two. Fifty-two. So that's yeah. is that what's <coughs> typical usually? I mean, typical is between twenty-five to thirty-five. Okay. So there's a number, of, we have a public hearing tonight, first meeting of the month, so we have a number of bills. We have like 14 or 15 pages, I think, of just bills on public hearing. Uh, we have a couple of votes up at the beginning. Um, we, have, um, we have to fill some industrial development board seats. Um, we have some council-related things that people are running for, including the head of the Planning Commission. Okay. Uh, not the director of the Planning Commission, the head of our Planning Committee that serves on the Planning Commission. So that's up tonight. Um, we have a traffic and parking commission vote up tonight for a council member to serve on that. So we have some actual elections between council members. Okay. Um, and then we have a number of bills on um, first reading, uh, or uh, um, yeah, we have a number of bills on first reading, which um, means we have a big heavy calendar coming up later. Uh, but we also have a number of bills on public hearing, and then we've got a couple of pretty interesting bills. Yeah. So we have the mass mandate bill up tonight, right? And then we have the transportainment bill up tonight on regulation on that. And of course, uh, you, you've been back since this happened, but uh, I guess scooters don't qualify under transportainment. But uh, the story yesterday was uh, the tragedy of a, uh, a woman, I think, visiting here from Texas, who was out on a scooter, maybe with uh, friends or family, and we're not sure of the circumstances, but she collided right. with the back of a semi-truck, and uh, she died. And so it, again, brings up the question of scooters. Uh, there aren't as many scooters as there were originally when it really started, but they're out there. You know, we don't know the circumstances again here exactly if, if there was a malfunction in the scooter or if she had some problems operating it. But someone died, and um, it's going to raise questions for that, too. It's separate, yeah. though, right? It's not transportainment? Yeah, this uh, this thing is uh, tied to what you see, the, the pedal taverns, the, um, right. uh, you know, the, the trailers, those things. Uh, I, I've read through the bill. I don't believe it pertains to scooters, but... Okay. Um, obviously, with the incident yesterday, I think people go back and take another look. Um, you know, the the uh, transportainment bill is more about uh, regulatory functions, about you know having them get licensed and making sure that somebody can oversee them and pull licenses if people don't do what they're supposed to. Make sure people aren't properly right. vetted for a license. Those types of things. The scooters a little different because obviously, uh, you know, if you drive around town. You see tourists just, you know, going, "Hey, I'm going to do this." Uh, there is no, I, there's no, no responsibility to go it's take a, a class to learn how to do them. You just get on them and you start riding them. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you think back when they first came, when it was first a big deal issue, and they were everywhere originally. Yeah, they were everywhere. People were just dropping off on the sidewalk. People were tripping over them. People were running over people on the sidewalks. So the issue kind of died down. And now, unfortunately, we've had a. a, a you know, right. a very, a very difficult situation, or a very sad 
uh, event that is going to cause people, I think, to take another look. Okay, I figured that as much. Um, we're going to take some calls, but uh, a couple other things to go over. Um, Phil Williams had an I-Team investigation looking at uh, Gideon's Army and the role you know Gideon's Army can play in, in maybe improving situations in some of these neighborhoods that have high crime. And uh, Gideon's Army had a lot of very positive press. You know, yeah. Phil's piece, and he did some pieces in the past on Gideon's Army, and he looked again this time, and it looked more at some of the involvement of certain individuals and whether or not, you know, Metro should be giving as much money as they are to Gideon's Army, considering some of what he uncovered. I know you haven't seen all his pieces. You saw the first two, um, and, you know, the question will be moving forward, is Metro, based on some of what Phil uncovered, going to uh, re-up? with uh, another million dollars for Gideon's Army or more money for Gideon's Army uh, moving forward based on what was seen there. And I'm just wondering, where do you, where do you think the council is going to stand on this? Well, um, I think you, whenever you're dealing with taxpayer money, you always are careful. Um, and you, um, I mean, that should be the case whether Phil Williams does a story on something sure. or not. You always want to be careful. Um, but there were discussions uh, previously with uh, Rashida Fatuga, uh, yeah. who's the executive director mm -hmm. of Gideon's Army, um, that you know everybody. When you're dealing with with public money, you have to be responsible. You have to be accountable. Those things you got to measure the results. Things like that. Um, I think uh, the way I look at it is okay. So I don't know exactly when all the I saw some of the videos that were mm -hmm. on Phil's story, and um, yeah, n not not very good videos, mm -hmm. um, but the concept. Uh, violence interruption, I think, has uh, has merit. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things where you have to look at it. We have to be innovative. Um, we have a crime problem here. And, uh, if you take a look at um, what the district attorney's office sends out, the number of arrests, the number of people who are being incarcerated is going down um, because they're, they're worried more about the more violent stuff. Mm -hmm. But we have violent crimes, and we have to deal with that. And I think when you start looking back, you start thinking about, okay, do you just incarcerate all the violent criminals? And that's obviously what we have to do now, but we want to decrease the number of crimes. We want to decrease the number of violent crimes. And so you have to start going backwards and you have to start looking at, okay, what do we do to try to get um, particularly young kids? Because we do not want uh, serious juvenile crimes. Mm -hmm. What do we do? What, what do we do uh, in terms of trying to prevent it much earlier so we actually have fewer violent crimes in the city? By the time the crime is committed, it's too late. Mm -hmm. You've already had the crime committed. So how do you step back? Violence interruption is one of those programs right. that we should take a look at about trying to deal with situations much earlier so that the crime never happens. Yeah, so I, I think most would agree, you know, the idea of Gideon's Army and so much of what they've done has been good, and, and the whole concept, I, I, you know, that term, violence, interruption, and all that, makes sense to me, okay? I agree with you on that. It's just, it may be then that if more money's, I, I, mean, I assume the council's going to look at this and have to address, all right, well, we need to look at what we've seen here, and there may have to be some adjustments made on either who's involved or how it's done, right. and, and again, <coughs> measuring the truthfulness of how how much crime reduction is actually there and, and what good is done and what can be done better. And, and I don't know I, if they'll be agreeable to that or if the council will be agreeable in giving more money. You know, but I mean, there certainly has to be some questions coming out of those pieces. Uh, it was my understanding while well, I was um, uh, yeah. trying to uh, have a few days off uh, that we were trying to put together kind of um, um, uh, maybe a, a joint effort of our budget and finance committee and our new public safety and health because some mm -hmm. of our committees merged uh, bring those committees together allow the council to come in um, bring in miss fatuga and anybody else from gideon's army have a discussion yeah talk um, about again um, you know, Phil does an excellent job on his pieces. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad that Rashida and th that they had a conversation. Yeah. Um, what we do is, you know, you like we said at the very beginning of this show and at the be beginning of this whole process with Gideon's Army. You know, whenever you give out public money, there's a grant process, a contract, responsibilities. Uh, yeah, everybody's uh, hopefully on the same page with that. 
Let's see if it works. Mm -hmm. But we're, I think we're going to have a discussion to make sure that everything is good. Gotcha. All right, listen, we got to take a break on that. Um, we've got some other things to talk about as well, you know, the mask mandate and how mm -hmm. that'll be going forward. Got some phone calls waiting for you. We'll get to those in just a moment. The number is 737 7587 Vice Mayor Jim Shulman with us. We'll take a break and be back with your calls and more of our conversation with him about the city of Nashville right after this.